Hello everybody. We're ready now for part six in this series about the Apostle Peter. Um, the reason we're doing all of this study about Peter is we're leading up to going back to understanding the prophecies of Jacob when he prophesied over his 12 sons. And this is related to the tribe of Simon. Because if you remember, Peter's name is Simon before Jesus changed it to Peter or Cephas. So now we're going to take a look. We're still focusing on Peter here. Um, the, I'm going through the events that Peter was present at. Um, he seemed to be one of the small group that was closest to Jesus. Even among the apostles, there was a smaller group that seemed to be um, more favored by Jesus or more um, where he brought them places that he didn't bring the other apostles. So this is one of them. This is called the Transfiguration. As I'm going to read it from uh, Matthew chapter 17. Uh, uh, this config transfiguration also appears in Mark chapter 9 and Luke chapter 9. Uh, okay, starting in verse 1 of Matthew 17. And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother. James and John were brothers, sons of Zebedee. And he brought them into a high mountain apart, alone. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes were white as the light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. So now here we have Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And Jesus is transfigured into this bright, shining, light person. And I imagine Moses and Elijah were also, they're like uh, this angelic vision. Uh, so who are these people, Moses and Elijah? Moses is the great lawgiver. Elijah is the greatest prophet. And Jesus is the great Messiah, the, 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 the bringer in of the new covenant, the, law, the, the, the covenant of grace. So here are these three. They, they represent the kingdom of God in its entirety, really. It's almost like the, uh, a shadow of the Trinity. You have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Father is like the lawgiver. The Son is like the, um, the Messiah. And then the Holy Spirit is like the prophet. So it's, it's like a shadow of the Trinity. They, they are um, doing the work of the kingdom of God. So Peter and James and John are, are uh, greatly favored in order to witness this. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So this is a sort of, um, if you look at this symbolically, what that would symbolically represent if they did that, would be to divide that Jesus, Moses, and Elijah into three religions, into three separate leaderships when they are, they are 
not divided, they are absolutely united in what they are doing for the kingdom of God. So Peter's got it completely backwards here. And while he spoke, while, while Peter spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in who I am well pleased. Listen to him. Okay? Don't listen to Peter. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man except Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man is risen again from the dead. He's talking about himself. And the disciples asked him, saying, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must first come? So why, why um, is it written in the Hebrew scriptures that Elijah will come first before the Messiah, before the great day? So now they're referring to the very last uh, chapter, the very last paragraphs in the Hebrew scriptures, which you will find in the book of Malachi. It's the very last book in the Old Testament. And chapter 4. I'll just read chapter 4. And, and they're asking about this. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So what's that mean? They will be, the wicked will be stubble with neither root nor branch. Neither root nor branch means that they will never grow again. And continuing, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. So this is uh, the, the great Messiah that will come in and save the world. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, as like young sheep. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So, this is what they're asking him about, you see, because Moses and Elijah and God are here. It's happening. It's happening. This is the great day of the Lord. And Elijah hasn't come. Like, that hasn't, we haven't seen that. What's going on? And Jesus answered and said to them, Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah is already come. And they did not know him, but have done to him whatever they, li they liked. Likewise also shall the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them about John the Baptist. Okay, so Jesus had uh, said in other places that John the Baptist is Elijah. And John the Baptist 
he was the one who came and brought baptism in um, immersion in the water as a symbol of accepting God's uh, repentance and changing your life and becoming a new person, being born again. Um, so John the Baptist also preached. They asked him, what should we do? Because he told them that the, the kingdom of God is, com is coming. And so he told them, uh, you know, if you're a tax collector, don't collect taxes unfairly. If you're a leader, don't lead unfairly. Whatever you are, you are doing in life, do it in a, in a, with integrity, basically. It's, that was his message. And also he's saying that the Messiah is coming. And he was pointing at Jesus as the Messiah. So it's very interesting what Jesus said here. His, he said that Elijah will come, but he's already come. So this is again um, alluding to what I've been talking about quite a bit, is that prophecy is like a cycle. It's, it, it happens again and again. But I think it's like maybe three times. So Elijah came in, in the old days, in, in the days of the kings of Israel during the first temple period. He came in those days and he did his ministry. And then he comes back again as John the Baptist and, and performs the same role in a in a in a a greater aspect and then before the second coming of Christ he will come again and bring the hearts of the fathers towards the sons and the sons towards the fathers bring people together lest God should smite the earth with a curse lest there be no righteous um, so, so there, it's basically there will be a leader who brings a great revival, leading to the coming of Christ. Uh, I think that's what he's talking about. So that was the transfiguration, and that was Peter still doesn't get it. He's, uh, let's build a temple. Like, he's still thinking like a, like a almost like a pagan. Is that every god has a temple so he's thinking okay you guys get three temples and so he just still doesn't get the kingdom of god okay uh so the next one we're going to look at is matthew chapter 17 verse 24 to 27 okay when they came to capernaum and they that received the tribute money came to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? So this is the tax collector. In those days they had uh, Matthew, the Apostle Matthew was actually a tax collector. And he uh, left his job and, and became an apostle. Um, what The way it worked in Rome in, no, in those times was... Uh, people would bid on a tax farm. So there would be like an, a certain region that somebody needed to collect taxes for Caesar and for Rome. And, and that region was, called, was a tax farm. And so that person was given the right and the full power of the Roman guard to collect taxes. And that person had to pay a certain amount, a fixed amount, to Caesar for the, the right to have that tax farm. But then these tax farmers would take double of what, or even triple, they would put take as much as they could squeeze out of people for themselves, and they only had to pay Caesar the certain amount. So that's the way tax farms were working. And... Um, so tax tax collectors were seen as the 
the evil devil, uh, the worst of society. Um, you know, it was just the terrible things were happening. And, uh, you know, not all tax farmers were that bad. Some of them did have integrity and took a fair amount, but a lot of them didn't. So this, these are the tax farmers coming around now um, to the Jesus and his disciples. Do you, does not your master pay tribute? And he said, Peter, they came to Peter, and Peter said, yes. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> and when Peter was coming into the house, Jesus prevented him. He stopped him at the door. So this is a very symbolic. You coming into my house? First, I have a question to ask you. He says, what do you think, Simon? So now he's calling him Simon. This is uh, another thing that you'll find in the Bible quite a bit, um, where it's like Jacob and Israel. We, we did a study on Jacob and Israel because Jacob was renamed. He's, God said, your name will no longer be Jacob. From now on, it will be Israel. But then when Jacob was reverting back to his old self, he would be called Jacob. But when he's moving forward in faith, he would be called Israel. So this is the same thing with Simon and Peter. Um, Jesus is calling him Simon, which is like, you've lost that designation of being called Peter for now until you turn your your ways back around so he says uh, what do you think Simon of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers and Peter said to him of strangers and Jesus said to him then are the children free so the kings of the earth, they take tribute from strangers, not from their own children. So then the children are free. The children of the king are free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, now that you've said that, now that you've said yes, then we should pay them because we don't want to offend them. We don't want to start a war. Could you imagine what would Jesus have said if Peter didn't say, if Peter just said, I don't know, let's ask him. What, what, what would Jesus have said to the tax collectors? We don't know. You know, but Peter said yes. So Jesus is now um, doing damage control. So, uh, Jesus goes on and says, Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that first comes up. And when you have opened his mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Okay, and then at the same time, the, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> We've already done that in the last video. But anyway, so, um, so Jesus, uh, you'll find this story also in uh, Matthew, uh, no, in Luke 23, verse 1. Or actually, we're going to look at this. You'll find this story in other parts of the New Testament and uh, um, where Peter went and caught the first fish he caught it had a coin in the fish um, and I guess what it is 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 from a God perspective what what that is about is that giving back to Caesar what is Caesar's is the, there was a coin in the bottom of the sea of Galilee I suppose and the fish ate the coin 
And so God is giving Caesar his coin back. And we'll read that uh, principle in Matthew 22, verse 15 to 22. Uh, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk, Jesus. And they sent out to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, the Herodians are the kings, uh, Herod and his kids. Um, the, the, that's the um, civil authority in Jerusalem. So they sent out their disciples and the Herodians who, who were able to arrest him. And they were saying, Master, we know you are true and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care for any man, for you regard not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? You see, because if you, if he says no, then they will say, well, why, well, you're putting Caesar above God. But if he says yes, wait a minute. If he says, yes, you should give tribute to Caesar, then they'll say, well, why are you putting Caesar above God? But if he says no, then they can arrest him for teaching people not to pay taxes. So they're trying to put him on the spot. And Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why do you tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought him a penny, which would be a denarius, a silver coin. And he said to them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said to him, It's Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore unto, unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Because they couldn't catch him. And so, uh, so that was the fish. And Peter, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And I suppose he ate the fish, which is God's. Now... Uh, let's take a look at one more thing. Luke 23, 1. Luke 23. Wow. So this is when Jesus is arrested. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. So now they're accusing him of forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. So they accuse him anyway even though he didn't do that. You don't need to go on with that. But uh, there you go. They accuse him anyway. And then uh, now we'll go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 20. This is a, a, a moving on from the taxes. So, starting in verse 16 of Matthew 19, And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you call me good? There is no one good but one, 
that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, which? Jesus said, you shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said to him, All of these things I have kept from my youth, but what do I lack? And Jesus said to him, If you will be perfect, go and sell, and sell all you have and give it to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Verily I say to you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard it, so you, you can understand basically what Jesus is saying here. When they heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can be saved? And Jesus beheld them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And then Peter said to him, So now we're, we're, this is about Peter that we are looking at. Behold, we have forsaken all and followed you. What will, what will we have, therefore? So Peter saying, us, us apostles, us disciples, we've given up everything to follow you, so what do we get? And Jesus said to them, Verily I say to you, you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that has forsaken houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit an everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and last shall be first. Now let's look at Mark chapter 10. So this is a story about the rich young ruler. And it's the same story basically. And, uh, and um, about the rich guy asking what more should I do. So now we're going to read the same ending from Mark. Starting in verse 28. And, began, and Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have left all and have followed you. And Jesus, answered, and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say to you, there is no man that has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and last first. If we look at Luke chapter 22, And then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent, Jesus sent, Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said to him, Where will, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, Behold, when you enter into the city, there shall be a man to meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And you shall say unto the good man of the house, The master says to you, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. 
And when they went, they found as he had said to them, and they made ready the Passover. So that's just another thing about Jesus, that um, Jesus, uh, Peter and John were the two most often um, sent by Jesus to do things, and, and they were like his right-hand men, Peter and John. So now, let's look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is a famous chapter in the Bible. It's uh, when Jesus talks about, in great detail, about the end of the world. Um, so they're in the temple. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. It's like, look at these buildings. Isn't this amazing? It was, uh, it was one of the seven wonders of the world in that time. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then uh, he, they came back and asked him, when is all this going to happen? And, and he started to prophesy a lot about the destruction of Jerusalem, which is also, as I said, there's the destruction of Jerusalem, and then the next round, a bigger round, a worldwide round, will be the end of the world. It's, it's the way the prophecy is recycled. Okay, and then in uh, Ma Mark chapter 13, verse 3, and they say, it's the same event, and they say, uh, as they sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and, a and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And then Jesus went on for a long way, talking about what all the signs will be of the end of the world. So it's Peter. Who are the disciples that he tells this to? Peter and James and John and Andrew. So James and John are, are, are brothers. And Peter and Andrew are brothers. So it's the two sets of brothers. So it's basically, it's John, Peter and John are like the top two um, that are closest to Jesus. And the other guys were there because they were their brothers, basically. And then in Luke chapter 21, we find the same event again. So we find the, the same the same events um, described about the end of the world in Luke chapter 21. So now in Matthew chapter 26 is the next event um, involving Peter. Then Jesus said to them, All you shall be offended because of me tonight. Because it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. It was written in the prophets. I think that's Isaiah. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And Peter answered and said to him, Though all men shall be offended because of you, I will never be offended. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this night, before the cock crows, you shall deny me three times. Um, that uh, The cock crows in the morning at sunrise. So before sunrise, he will deny him three times. And Peter said to him, Though I should die with you, I will not deny you. And uh, the other disciples also said the same thing. Neither will we. None of us will. Then uh, 
Jesus came to Gethsemane with them and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said to them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Wait you here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I want, but as you want. And he came to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again a second time and prayed, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, your will be done. And he came and he found them asleep again, because their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then came, he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that, that does betray me. And while he yet spoke, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Okay, how far am I going to read this for? And, okay, so now he's being betrayed by Judas. And then, uh, and then Peter, we'll, we'll skip ahead now. When Jesus is in the house of Herod and, and he's being questioned and being in trial. And Peter sat outside the palace and a damsel came to him saying, You also are with Jesus of Galilee. And he denied before them all, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said to them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while, um, came to them they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. And he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. And then the cock crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said to him, Before the cock crows, you shall deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. So now, uh, the thing that's happening here is, as Jesus is being crucified and tried, the apostles are going through their own trial, and Peter is going through his own trial of his soul, and and he, like Jesus said, the the, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Peter. To save his own skin, uh, denied Jesus three times, and that um, cut to his soul. So during the, the trial and crucifixion, Peter is going through a trial of his own in his own personal um, self. So this is like a uh, all the apostles went through this. And, and this is uh, um, it's something that happens to Christians. You, you, you'll be brought to uh, a, a, a moment in your life where, you, where it truly changes you from very deep within. So this is what Peter is going through now at, during this time. So in the next video, we will uh, take a closer look at Peter uh, during the resurrection of Jesus and, 
and and afterwards i'll see you in the next video